Welcome to the Ionix podcast, a podcast about software engineering, new ways of working, and lots of other interesting stuff. Thank today, you. today I have one of my favorite returning guests, Yatish. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, Marcus. Thank you for having me. Uh, Yatish Porwal is your last name, right? That's correct. Um, we wanted to have you back to discuss something we didn't discuss last time. Hmm. Um, we did discuss domain-driven design, which was very interesting, and we got a lot of positive feedback on. That's great, yeah. But today, I would like, actually, t- if you would talk a little bit more about w- what your actual assignment is at the big Dutch bank you work for, maybe uh, we could get into that. So um, what would be a good place to start? Maybe the kind of team or domain you're working on? Sure, I I can talk about it, right? So. Uh yeah, I mean, uh, you you already mentioned that you know I'm working at a big Dutch bank, and um, the overall what they are trying to do is uh, since it's a global bank and uh, they have local branches in different different countries across Europe, mm-hmm. and um, every branch or uh, um, they have their own local implementation, and they have their local data. Okay. So, uh, but uh, the customers are global and the, the bank is global. So there's no one single representation of the data. So, uh, uh, I mean, every country has uh, created their own data model and then uh, applications on top of it. So it's not just one view. Okay. So from a consumer perspective, it's like, you know, uh, if I'm in the Netherlands, then I see uh, a different screen, different uh, fields. Oh, if I okay. move to Austria, I get different thing, even though it's okay. the same ING bank. Okay. So um, they came up with the concept that, you know, we want to have a one global data view. Okay. And they created one global data model. So what I am doing in my team is uh, basically creating the APIs which will uh, store that data in that particular data model. Okay. Retrieve it and update it and delete it and all that stuff. And then uh, move all those local um, ING bank branches into this data model. So there's a data migration that happens and you know you have to convert their data into uh, this global data model. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like a pretty big project? It is a pretty big project. Is it also a big team? Yeah, overall, um, I mean, uh, we work in the bank as squads. Okay. So um, there are, I think there are 12 or 13 squads. And each of the squad have seven to eight members. So it, it is <laughs> it is like in a size of a pretty much small company or something like that. That is f- specifically for this project only? Yeah, this project, right? Because uh, there are m- many pieces, right? So I am working on one piece of that data model okay. and the data model is pretty huge. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm on the one part of it and then the other parts are uh, developed and ma- maintained by other teams. And which is specifically the part you are working on? It is uh, related to, uh, you could call as a, um, a call as a like an involved party or like, you know, as a individual or as an organization, when you go and open your bank, right? So you provide your some uh, personal data about your like, you know, name, date of birth, country oh, yeah. and all that stuff, right? Uh, so yeah, that's like very bare, uh, bare minimum base data, right? Okay. So that needs to be managed because um, all the applications require that, right? Your first name, last name, uh, date right. of birth, where you live, right? So yeah, so uh, since those data are in a different, different country in a different format, we need one representation for all the customers. Okay. So and initially uh, when I joined that uh, bank, like some three years back, uh, then we worked on this, uh, you know, where bare minimum APIs to create the data and update the data. And later on, uh, uh, we started working on creating a business services. So similar to our squad, other squads, they have created their bare bone uh, uh, APIs. Now we are creating a business service where we are orchestrating multiple uh, APIs together. And that makes sense to a a web application. Ah, okay. So it sounds like this is what mostly classify as backend. It is development, all, yes, right? it's total backend development. It's all based on Java, microservices, uh, the kind of a stack and the Azure DevOps uh, as a CI CD pipeline. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's total pure Java uh, backend. Um, I haven't worked anything on like, you know, front end for the last three years at, at this assignment. Yeah. Right. And um, 
so if we if we go more on a like day to day level, mm-hmm. uh, let's say what 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 would a a, a workday look like? Like what is the stuff you work on? So so basically, the way of working that we do in our squad, or pretty much in the entire um, you know all the squads in 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 this tribe, is uh, we we work on the agile and scrum uh, kind of a principle. So. I mean, we do have our daily stand-up in the morning, right. and then you know we give our updates, like you know what we are working on. If I need some help or I'm blocked, or somebody can unblock you, or I can unblock someone. So we uh, that's that's the way our day starts, and then uh, you know I start working on my own task uh, or stories. Um, uh, what has what has been refined um, through our backlog refinement, uh, you know, sure. which we do in like every like twice a week. So we have a lot of stories. So we uh, do spend a good amount of time on refinement and make sure that uh, stories are refined very well. Right. And anybody can pick up that story at any point in time. So okay. it's it's well defined, right? You you I mean you need little bit of help, but mostly things are written over there. As okay. Said. So yeah. So our day to day is. Um, Start with the scrum, and then you know start working on your task, and then um, we are constantly on team. So you know we communicate with each other and along with the team that oh I'm stuck something or maybe my local environment is not working or something has changed. Um, but in general, um, if everything goes good, then you know I'm working on my task, and uh, towards the end of the day, maybe creating a pull request. Uh, you know, so that the other team members can review it. Right. Yeah. So, and we have a kind of a um, uh, kind of a um, arrangement uh, uh, among our squad is that two reviewers that had to review your code. Right. Right. Other right. than you. Yeah. So uh, more the pair four, of isn't that the four I principle? It's a four I principle, right? Yeah. Exactly. More I is the better. So yeah. So that's the principle we do. So people review the pull request and then uh, you know they have their comments, some suggestions, or something like that. Then we have a discussion either on the online tool or offline on like you know Teams or on a call or something, and we we resolve that, and you know it gets you know merged into the main repository. Right? So are you also responsible for uh, deployment? Yeah, we do. Okay. Yeah. So um, the way we are working actually is. Um, Every few weeks, uh, we have a um, squad uh, s- a schedule, right? Like, you know, which squad is going to actually do the deployment uh, this week? Every week we do a deployment. Okay. So, and there is a schedule. So, um, I mean, think every uh, th- third or fourth time our squad comes as a deployment. Ah, uh, okay. It's like uh, interns. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Right, so everybody gets a flavor how to deploy it, like, you know, wh- what it looks like, right? It's not right. like you just code it and you're done, right? So you actually, you know, take it all the way to production right. and see um, if there are issues in your uh, APIs or in other APIs. And yeah, so you, we get the complete experience on that. Right. And um, so the software that you build is uh, basically used it's more like an internal API, right? So different web services or other services will talk to, right. to the stuff you're building, basically. Right. These APIs are totally internal. They are not exposed to a public or on the internet. Right. These APIs are used only for ING applications, right. which are uh, exposed publicly to right, the consumers. Right, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And um, are there specific things you find... Uh, like specifically challenging about the the work you do. Um, well, uh, I I wouldn't say it's it's challenging. It's very interesting work. Number okay. one, um, challenging in the sense um, initially, uh, like you know, uh, in the bank, it's it's a big bank. So uh, uh, what happened was there was no uh, lay, laid out architecture like how we need to do it. Right. right. So um, initially, we struggle uh, as a team, like you know how we should do it. Then there was uh, not a dedicated architect over there. Uh, like somebody gave some rough idea about it, and then we got together in our own squad, saying that yeah, this makes sense. Like you know how to first we understood like you know what was the idea behind creating these APIs and how we should do it. Mm-hmm. So. Um, then uh, uh, somebody suggested, oh, we can do it in just like one layer and, you know, just connect everything from uh, everywhere, like, you know, from the resource class all the way to repository, just put everything together. 
but then we said no uh, we need to do a kind of a hexagonal approach when in the hexagon there are multiple entries to your system if hexagon is your system um, yeah so we we designed that way that all the layers are quite separate and um, they are all interacting through a java interface right i'm going little technical over here but it's uh, yeah it's a java interface rather than like you know having a full dependency on the classes but um, does this also mean that in practice you're also a bit of an architect basically in your job i i do play that role right yeah yeah, I, yeah uh, as a, as a senior member in the team uh, yeah i do play that role and i uh, do advocate like you know this is the good architecture um, and then you know uh, try to convince the team in a different different way and everybody's right. opinion is welcome it's not like i am the only uh, member right so um, i advocate them with the like you know uh, taking an example like you know what if we do this way or other way and we evaluate on the pros and cons of right, it right, right. and then you know um, as a team we commit and then uh, start working on it okay and since you are an yonex consultant you you work at your organization as a external uh developer right um how how does that work is is there any difference between uh people employed by the bank and external developers or are they all treated the same like how does that work in practice yeah actually that's a very good question and um i feel uh the the bank is uh, very open and very welcoming so uh there is actually no difference okay we no, i mean for a good amount of time in the bank i even didn't know who is internal and who is external ah okay <laughs> there was no conversation you need to ask people explicitly to even find out basically right exactly okay. yeah yeah ah, that's great yeah um yeah i think that was all the questions i have is there anything else you would like to share about the work you do that we didn't discuss something interesting maybe that we didn't touch on uh well i i just say like you know there were um, some of the initiatives that i took over there uh when i went over there and i saw like you know things were not uh, uh that much process oriented right so they were okay. uh, so in in the particular bank that i work they do not have a role of a kind of a scrum master ah okay yeah they so, so they don't see that uh, you know that role as a separate role they see it as a function and anybody can perform that function hmm. So um and it was missing it was like you know nobody was willing to do that and uh, not everybody uh, knew how to actually do it right so when i uh, went there and i saw that you know this problem can be solved uh, by a scrum master and i took that role and i i took that initiative and i asked my product owner can i do that and you know he said yeah sure uh, you know if you want to play that role um yeah so i played that role along with the uh, developer role um it was little bit tough because you know sometime uh, you need to uh, you are as a developer so you have to take a side of a developer but then that is conflicting with your scrum right, master right right yeah right. so yeah that. that that was a interesting uh, um, situation that i got in and i uh, took that initiative um, so i'm happy about that right and i think it was well appreciated in the bank every time i uh, meet my chapter lead he mentions that like you know the kind of approach that you did um, that it's very well taken and you know it took the team onto a right path and you know uh, getting things delivered so he always appreciates that so so the in in that sense the uh, the our customers uh, you know the or the banks they are very happy if somebody uh, takes the initiative on their own right right yeah. even even though it's not like extra pay or something like that right but yeah yeah i think that's also as far as i see it your role as an external consultant that they hire for quite a big hourly fee that you're a very professional person who can just see like oh what is needed here uh, what can i bring to the table how can i help the organization right exactly right yeah it's not just like you know you have been given some task and you're just doing that right, right? yeah you you take your interest in, in like you know uh, like um, you want to do good right i mean and you want to showcase like you know you you worth the money right yeah exactly yeah, exactly yeah. great Thank you so much, uh, Yatish, for sharing this. Yeah. And uh, I hope to speak to you soon for another podcast. I'm sure uh, you'll sure. be back. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.